And uh, we're going to start by standing and turn to the page 173, Blessed Be the Name, page 173, Blessed Be the Name, as we stand and sing all praise to Him who reigns above in majesty supreme, as we sing it out tonight. All praise to Him who reigns above in majesty supreme. Shall be the counselor, a mighty prince of peace, of all earth's kingdoms, conquerors, who we shall never cease. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name. singing. Brother Artie, would you please open us up in prayer? Father, we thank you for this evening as we meet together. Father, for the bright sunshine, not only uh, in our bodies and our face, but we thank you for the sunshine in our hearts because of Christ, the great Son of God, who is our life, eternal life. All be with those not able to make it tonight. We think of those on the prayer list. I do with my daughter, Rachel. Doing better and hope to get from home tomorrow. Lord, we just uh, pray for the message tonight. We ask this thing in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Glad you can make it out tonight. And I was telling others on the way in, uh, we've I've had probably about a you know, five, six people text me or call me and say, Preacher, I'm not going to be able to make it there tonight or, or they have something occupying them to where they wouldn't be here. But, uh, you know, I'm glad you're here. We do want to pray for those that are traveling. You think of Pastor Levi uh, and his family. They are traveling. They're in uh, Orlando having a good time with their family. And so pray for them on their travels and others that are returning, uh, others that will be leaving. Uh, and so we've got a lot of people going around about right now. And so pray for uh, our church family. Uh, if you know and you know somebody that might be on their way out or on their way in or holding off coming to services just because they have been out, uh, pray for them. Pray for them and ask the Lord to just uh, uh, give them a, a good day. Uh, help them, uh, you know, just kind of get back into the groove of things, okay? But with that being said, a couple things I did want uh, to, to let you know. Carl McKee, obviously, we know he has passed. Um, longtime member here at our church and just kind of a staple of faithful. You know, I always said this, if anybody had an excuse that you could say, you know, I, I, I couldn't make it out to church because, you know, I, I often thought of Carl because there was times where you know he didn't feel good. You know he didn't, uh, you know, he's recovering from X, Y, or Z, but yet he found his way in and sat in the back and rang the buzzer for Sunday school to be over. Uh, and, you know, he was just a picture of faithfulness. And uh, he hasn't been here for, uh, I don't know, a year plus just simply because of his move down to Florida. But, hey, Mike. Uh, and so we've got, uh, you know, just keep him and his family in our prayers on Saturday. Uh, they are going to have some services for the family up uh, in northern Indiana. It's a little over two hours away. So pray for the McKee family uh, just as they're you know, going through the process of lo losing a loved one. Uh, but I was talking to Judy Williamson, t Williamson today, and you know the adage, uh, our loss but heaven's gain, you know, kind of brings comfort during times like that. We might lose uh, you know, someone we love and hold dear to down here. Uh, but, man, uh, it's a rejoicing 
uh, in heaven. And so we, uh, we do want to pray for Carl and his family. And then I talked to Judy as well, uh, just kind of wanting an update on Tina. Uh, and Tina is recovering, but she ended up back in the hospital with, a, with an infection. And so she is getting over that, but she goes Tuesday to that surgeon. So Tuesday, once again, she goes to the surgeon to see if he feels that it is time to close the wounds. And so Judy told me today, and you can tell they've been counting, 67 days that Tina's been either in hospital or rehabilitation. And so she'll just pray for them. They're exhausted. They're tired. Uh, but, you know, the, you know if you talk to Judy, uh, she'll lift your spirits by the end of the conversation. That's just kind of... Uh, her personality. And so we praise the Lord for her spirit and her faithfulness, but just pray God's strength be given. Uh, and uh, we do pray that the, the appointment on Tuesday will go well and that we will see, you know, Tina back to what she would say normal living here soon. And so we pray for her. Um, outside of that, I guess we'll open it up to the floor, just continue to pray for those that I've mentioned. But uh, does anybody have an update, something to pray about or praise the Lord about? Anybody? John Wiltshire? Okay. Right. 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 Amen. Amen. If you were here, for our personal evangelism course, what did, what did Dr. Getch say? How many times uh, uh, the gospel message is, somebody hears it before they come to know Christ? Did you remember that number? Mrs. Sending, what did, what did, 30? I think it was up in that area, 30 times. And he said, hey, you might be 29, you know, uh, but just be faithful in, in, in planting seeds and watering seeds. And so uh, just, you know, it is a praise. Anybody else? Mike Webb. I did talk with uh, Mark McKee, and he wanted me to let the church family know uh, that we are welcome uh, if you want to take the two-hour trip up to Kirkland, Indiana, Saturday, 2 p.m., Goodwin uh, Funeral Home. Um, he didn't have everybody's contact information, so he asked me to, to you know, spread the word. If, if, uh, if you don't have anything going on Saturday, uh, to our drive north to Kirkland, Indiana, uh, Goodwin Funeral Home, uh, and you're welcome. Uh, I'm sure it, it'll mean a lot to Mark and Ruth, maybe the grandkids too, but uh, he wanted me to share with Maranatha Baptist Church. Okay. The other, I, I contacted uh, Connie Shank, mm -hmm. just checking on uh, her and Glenn. Uh, she said they're doing okay, but they're kind of homebound at this point because neither of them are very steady uh, on their feet. Uh, they're, they're a little, it's, they're over the pandemic uh, worries, but they're just kind of shaky. They're afraid to, to get out uh, uh, too much. So uh, Pam and Rusty do a lot of the errand running for them and, and all of that. I just wanted to share that. And uh, I, I too spoke with Judy and and uh, yeah, we, we definitely need to keep her, Billy, uh, and Tina, and for that matter, Gabby, uh, in our, in our uh, prayer life uh, as Tina's recovering. All right. That's good. So if you didn't hear Mike, uh, he was, you know, if you are interested in, in going and attending the services, um, see Mike. He has the information, uh, and he'd be able to give that to you. That'd be this Saturday at 2 p.m., about two and a half hours, a little over two, between two and two and a half hours away from here. Uh, but then also Connie Shank and Glenn, they're just um, not able to get out and move around as much as they, uh, as they no doubt would like. So continue to pray for them. Uh, they have family running errands a lot for them. So continue to pray for the Shanks. Anybody I'm, else? I'm sure they would like a text, a phone call, a card, something. Sure. You know, yeah. Just let them know you're thinking about them. Anybody else? Anybody else? Something we can pray about with you? Charlotte? Okay. 
so Pat's doctor still has him out of work and uh, just has some, some hurdles to clear before surgery would be on the table. So pray for Pat and his, you know, his heart and the things that are happening there. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, well, if that's, if that's it tonight, uh, we praise the Lord for uh, his faithfulness and his, his uh, attention to us. And uh, we, we, we praise the Lord for Jesus, who is our intercessor, who, who makes it available uh, to go before the Lord. And so uh, we praise the Lord for that tonight. But we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8, if you remember, it's kind of the antithesis of Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7, there is uh, that woman crying out, that strange woman crying out, uh, getting one to follow after her and tempting and, and using smooth words, using her looks, using that type of uh, entrapment to bring to one down ultimately to, to destruction. It's what her way is, death and Sheol. And, and so uh, that's chapter 7. Now chapter 8, we switch gears a little bit in chapter 8. Wisdom is now calling. Wisdom is calling out to man. It's available to all men. We learn that wisdom is extremely valuable. Uh, and we've learned that over the, really the, the first seven chapters already. But in verse 8, matter of fact, in verse 8, I think in verse 10 and 11, and we see that wisdom, wisdom once again is in, uh, equated to, to precious jewels. And rubies are mentioned there in chapter 8 of, of her value. But it is her now that is calling out in chapter 8. We made our way down through uh, verse 11 and now find ourselves in verse 12, okay? And so it's interesting how we can bring uh, these verses and categorize them. And so we look here. Let's go ahead and read verse 12 as we have been when we do these studies. We'll read these verses and then kind of go back to the top and work our way down. So let's go to verse 12. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence... And find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy. And the evil way in the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me principles rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. Verse 21, that I, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. And so we see some things here about wisdom, what wisdom brings, what wisdom is accompanied with. And so we'll go back and we see the worth of wisdom in the, in the first part of this chapter. And now we move on to what wisdom is often associated. What, what company could we say, what company, we often say, what kind of company do you keep? You know, and we would say, well, I keep these people around for company. Well, wisdom keeps company too. And her company, we learn here, uh, is prudence. And so in verse 12, wisdom's companions, we can see them in verses 12, 13, and 14 by way of an outline. Wisdom's companions. Verse 12, we look at it again. It says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. When we think about this wisdom, we've been looking at it for some time. Wisdom, instruction, God's word, Jesus is wisdom. The New Testament describes Christ as wisdom. Wonderful is wisdom. Wisdom, when you think about it, when one obtains that wisdom, it sparks to life other virtues. And that's what you're finding here in, wisdom, uh, in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. Once one has wisdom, then therefore it, it brings company with it. It, it sparks life into other virtues. So if a person has wisdom, we all would want wisdom. We all want, want knowledge. We all want that knowledge to become applicable and exercised into wisdom. If a person has wisdom, here's what this is saying, a companion, a company will now be with prudence. You say, what is prudence? Well, it's, it's knowledge. 
It's good sense, or we can say it's discretion. Discretion. Wisdom inhabit, inhabits prudence. And when you look at let's read this verse again, and I want you to, to, to walk through this with me. I, wisdom, okay? This is her calling out to us. Dwell with prudence. So when you have wisdom, we see it gives the ability and accompanies with it discretion. Discretion to what? Discretion to identify witty inventions. When it says here, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. That's kind of a weird verse, isn't it? Witty inventions. Are we talking about like Thomas Edison type of invention? Are we talking about Nikolai Tesla uh, in, in current? Is that the type of inventions we're talking about? No, that's not what's being discussed here. Uh, and so we say witty, we know that to be kind of cunning inventions. And so let's describe this a little bit here. So wisdom, when one has wisdom, it brings about discretion to discern between two things. Something that might be a little bit, you, you, might, you look at it and you say it sounds good, but is it true? I'll give you an example. My wife and I, back, this, this probably happened, well, we were in our, our first home. So this was about year two of marriage. I'm at work and uh, I get home. And when I get home, here's a brand new Kirby vacuum cleaner sitting in my house. I said, Where did, what's going on with this thing? And she said, oh, it's great. This guy came and he tempted me. He was going to give me some free uh, paper towels if I just let him give a demonstration. Am I, am I, am I telling the truth, Maria? Yes, she's aching her head. I'll give you some free paper towels. You, you tell my wife you're going to get something for free. You've got her hooked for at least a few minutes, okay? Uh, and so she gets some paper towels out of the gig. Well, the guy came in. I'm at work, and she, he does this whole demonstration, and she, he's telling her how great the Kirby vacuum cleaner. The thing weighs like 300 pounds, right? If you've ever had a Kirby, it weighs a million pounds. But this guy must have sold her, right? He came in, and it was, she's giving me the whole spiel of what this guy did. He, he vacuumed our carpet, and he put a little... You guys have probably all seen this too. I'm seeing some of you ladies shake your head. He puts like a white, uh, you know, a white piece of cloth over the, the thing that would suck up the dirt. And so uh, he's vacuuming our carpet to what we think is clean. And he vacuums it and he pulls this white thing off where the dirt has been piling up. And he shows it to my wife. My wife is describing this to me. Shows it to her and she goes, and, and, and she couldn't believe what what was in our carpet. And then the guy said this, you have a baby, don't you? And Maria said, yes. And she go, he goes, I can't believe you let your, he didn't say it in that manner. It wasn't a caustic, you know, ca you know, but he said something along the lines of, you let your baby walk around and crawl around on this every day. Now you're talking to a new mother, right? New mother, less than a year old baby, crawling around, rolling around in the carpet. What do you think she did? She bought that $1,000 vacuum cleaner of whatever it was. <laughs> Set up installment plans, right? We would say, was that very wise? Well, I'm not going to hurt, you know, launch, uh, you know, insults over there. We would say, probably could have used some prudence, right? Prudence. Probably could have used some discretion. That guy has that thing down packed. He knows exactly what to say. He knows exactly when to say it. And he knows trigger words. You mention a baby in safety to a new mother, man, you got him, right? Right, you got him. So one would say some prudence would have been vital in that situation in order to truly identify, is this truth? Is my kid truly wallowing around in a pig pen? Probably not. But that's the way it was sold, right? And so that's what wisdom does. We have wisdom. We obtain wisdom by, by following the instructions of the God's word. We obtain wisdom through Jesus Christ. We ask for it. He gives it. And when we get this wisdom, it gives us a discretion to, and prudence to be able to identify truth and error. To identify those witty inventions. Those things that come before us that kind of have maybe some elements of truth, maybe some elements of, uh, you know, false. And you say, which, which way, which decision should I make? And that is the company. That is a blessing that accompanies wisdom. That's what verse 12 is describing. Who doesn't want that? 
so you don't end up with a $1,000 vacuum cleaner. I get home. You want to know the rest of the story, right? I get home. She gives me this whole thing. I vacuum with it. I say, it does pretty, work pretty good. I said, can you get your money back? <laughs> and sure enough, the guy came back the next day, picked it up, and we got our money back. But prudence is valuable, and it accompanies wisdom. Okay? Verse 13. Verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Let's address this forward mouth because we, we don't really use the forward mouth. We don't use that word forward. That's a hard word to get out of your mouth, period. Forward. If you say, so what is it? You know, obviously, if it's hated of God, then I want to know, or hated of wisdom, I want to know what forward it's hard to say, forward mouth. What is it? It's a mouth of perverseness. It's what you might entail sins of speech. Whether that be gossip, whether that be lying, whether it be tail-bearing, whatever. What, sins of speech would be that forward mouth, a, a mouth of, of perverseness. And so obviously we know that's one of the things that, that is listed here that is hated. In verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Now, that terminology isn't unfamiliar in the book of Proverbs, is it? The fear of the Lord, right? Is that unfamiliar terms? Let's go back to chapter 1. Chapter 1, we see that what the fear of the Lord is. So, let's tie these two together here. Chapter 1. Verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Okay, so the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So what is the fear of the Lord? In chapter 8, verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is what? It's to hate evil. It's to, to, to hate pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth. Do I hate? Verse 13 teaches us again that to fear God consists of a devotion to Him and, so not just, not just a devotion to God, but a dread of sin. Like, we ought to hate sin. It ought to be a dread to sin. And so, when we look at this, verse 2. Or verse, verse my notes were mixed up, sorry. Ver, uh, verse 13. When we look at this, the things in which is the opposite, or, or that which uh, is the opposite of righteousness, is listed here in verse 12. And we're to be warned of, but... When we have wisdom and when we have this prudence about us, it will, it will help us to rightly divide, rightly understand the situations and the scenarios to which are hated uh, of the Lord. And so we look here, all these tools that we see, and I have some things out of order. Here we go. That's right. So wisdom dwells with prudence and discretion but it cannot. So we see the company of wisdom is prudence and discretion, but what it is not accompanied with is evil. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And since the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge, it must come before all else. It must come before all else. If we have a fear of the Lord, it is defined for you and I here. We hate evil. It is what corresponds to the fear of the Lord. It indicates hating that which puffs up or pride, which is described here. I want you to, when you think about pride, how many words or how many letters does the, the word pride have in it? Five, right? Has anybody looked at the middle letter of the word pride? I. 
And so we see here <clears throat> that which is high, haughty, arrogant. These sins are what we might even call sins of attitude or conduct, the way we carry ourselves and the way we walk. And they often demonstrate that haughty spirit, that prideful spirit, that arrogant spirit is often demonstrated and, and comes out of our, our lives by what avenue? Our mouth. So pride, arrogance, haughtiness comes out of that forward mouth in conversation. Men, when we look at this, most often fear God. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Chapter 1, verse 7, and now we see the fear of the Lord is these things that, that are hated. It's the hate evil. And, it, and then the list that follows. Men often fear God because of the wrath that is to come at the end of age. Men often fear God because they know they're guilty and deserve punishment. And as a conclusion of this thought process, they present their life embittered by fear, by fear of wrath in the next. Can I tell you this? The, the, to fear retribution, to fear God out of, out of retribution or fear God out of, of what to come next is not the same of to fearing the Lord and hating sin. For most who fear out of retribution, judgment, seek sin with their whole heart. Instead of hating sin, they regret that God hates it. And so we see here, relaxing this fear of God's retribution is the driving force of false religions. And so we understand a true fear of the Lord isn't the fear of judgment. It's not the fear of, of the wrath to come. It's the fear of the Lord is what? To hate evil. To hate evil. To hate pride. To hate that haughtiness. To hate the forward mouth. And then we go to verse 14. <clears throat> Back to verse 14 of chapter 8. Well, let's read verse 12, 13, and 14. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Prudence, that discretion to understand uh, those, 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 those circumstances in life or circumstances presented in which we need to find truth. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord isn't, isn't to, 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 to fear His retribution, but it is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy in the evil way. In the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel, verse 14, is mine. And sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. And so we see here as we discuss and continue, the company of wisdom is discretion, prudence. It is not the opposite. It is not, uh, it is not arrogance. It is not... Pride isn't evil. It isn't a forward mouth. That's not the company of wisdom. But then we also continue here. It says, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. Or, I'm sorry, in verse, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. When you look at this, go with me to Job chapter 12. I wasn't intending to go here, but I think it would be good. Job chapter 12. So, Proverbs, let's go back, read Proverbs 8.14. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, 
I have strength. That's wisdom speaking. Now go to Job chapter 12, and we look down to verse 13. Let's see if this sounds familiar. With him is wisdom and strength. He hath counsel and understanding. Go with me down to verse 16. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. Verse 14 is reminiscent there of Job, where these attributes of God, and what's being discussed here in Job chapter 12, attributes of God are being stated. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, and I, I wasn't planning on going here either, we won't go there, but you can mark it down, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. This is the, perf, uh, you know, the predicted gifts of the one to come, the messianic king we know to be who? Jesus Christ. And these were going to be attributes of the one to come. What we just read here about wisdom and her company is found here in Job chapter 12, but then also a prediction of what that messianic king, Jesus Christ, would be like in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. You see, wisdom, wisdom enables people to give wise counsel. Wisdom enables people with sound judgment, with sound judgment, and to have understanding. Have you ever been around a person where you just get by them and you say, man, there's just like wisdom dripping off of them. It just feels like everything that comes out of their mouth is, is just good counsel. Well, that's, that's company here. That is, that is a part of wisdom. Counsel is mine. Counsel. It's not entirely the same sense as a counselor or the way we would use counsel today. But counsel is the ability to make decisions and shape plans that will have beneficial outcomes for all involved. Sound wisdom mentioned here is a is strategy that really works and enjoys lasting success. You see, true wisdom, when we talk about this, the true wisdom, the true understanding of God's word, true application of God's word, wisdom enables people to give wise counsel. True wisdom gives men their best counsel in all difficult situations. That's why in the book of James that we are to ask for what? Wisdom. Because in wisdom we have counsel. We have understanding. All understanding is in Him. Is in Him. All enlightenment, all aha moments is derived from Him. God's understanding. I, I, I'll go back and I'll give you a verse to accompany that. When I say all enlightenment, all of those aha moments, all of those moments when your things just click and it turns on, and you have understanding. Uh, you can go to John chapter 1 verse 9 and see it displayed there. But God's understanding is the solution. You have a problem before you. The understanding from God is what is needed in the solution. His almighty strength is everlasting. Psalm 117 verse 5, Isaiah 40, 28. All understanding. Let's go back to verse 14. Counsel is mine. Counsel. Counsel is mine. Is the ability to make decisions and shape plans which have beneficial, beneficial outcomes. Okay? So counsel is mine. Any of the ability for you to, to differentiate, to make plans with a beneficial outcome, that is of God. A sound, and sound wisdom. And sound wisdom. And it says this. I am understanding. I want you to understand that God's understanding is the solution. Understanding is not compassion or say, oh, I understand. Somebody is having a hard time and, and uh, uh, you, you, you would often say this, yeah, I understand what you're going through. It's not, it's not what this understanding is meeting here. It's not compassion or sympathy as sometimes how we use it in our English language. But what it is, it's pertaining to insight. Oh, I understand. I understand. That comes from God comes from God. The, the skill to dissect an issue and its components, to see into the heart of a matter, and to bring it all together is of God. 
It's interesting that this understanding is linked several times in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1, you can write them down, Proverbs 1, 2. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 4. All pertain to this understanding that God gives to you and I through wisdom. Understanding. I am understanding. And as we use all these tools, all these tools can bring significant accomplishment and an effective solution to problems and set course It could be set course of action in, in politics, in economics, in justice, so that they become what we would call great strength. Wisdom. Let's read verse 12, 13, and 14 and move on to 15. It says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy. This is not associated with wisdom. It's the antithesis here, as I said earlier. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the forward mouth. Do I hate counsel is mine. There's company with, that, with, with wisdom. Counsel is mine. And sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. So if wisdom is understanding, where does wisdom come from? Wisdom comes from God. So where does understanding come from? It comes from God. I have strength. In all of our conflicts and our weariness, we can go to him who has strength and power. Remember, tonight, as we, we're not done yet, but when you leave this place, there's tremendous blessings in the fear of the Lord and hating evil. God's wisdom that he gives will inspire us. It will sustain us. Sometimes life presents us with Challenges. Why? How? It presents us with those challenges. And you can even say it presents us with those challenges on a daily basis. Do I move? Do I not move? Do I put my kids in school over here? Do I not put my kids in school over here? Do I attend this church? Do I not attend this church? All decisions that are made in our lives. And it is in these moments that we need it is in these moments that calls for great wisdom and strength. And it's of the Lord. Maybe it's a decision that might affect others' lives. Maybe it's a decision to take on more responsibility or assume maybe a heavier responsibility. We may be challenged by some change in circumstances that seems to, 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 it seems to, to mean to just, just disrupt our whole way of life. And so how do I discern it? Wisdom. God. We can meet every challenging situation or circumstances by putting first things first. That is by taking it to God in prayer. As we open ourselves to God's inspiration, we find that every challenge is an opportunity to become stronger, wiser, happier than we were before. In the communion, in that time of prayer that you and I have, during that time of prayer will come an assurance that God's Spirit, God's Spirit is the strength of our lives. It's not me, it's not, it's not anything that I can do, but it's God's Spirit that is the strength of our life. God inspires us to make right decisions and gives us the strength and the courage necessary to carry out those right decisions. That is wisdom. Wisdom in her company. Verse 15 and 16. By me kings reign. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. So verse 15, when I read this, by way of application for you and I, verse 15 attests that, that wisdom is the source of, Wherever leaders make the right decision. It says, by me, wisdom is speaking again. So it's by me, wisdom, kings reign. If you remember, what did King Solomon ask for? 
when he could have had anything. He goes to God. We learned it in Sunday school a couple weeks ago. He didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for his enemies' heads on a platter. He didn't ask for, for, for position status. What did he ask for? He said, you've given me this great nation, a, a people numbered beyond what I can be numbered. I need, I need discernment. I need wisdom to be able to lead this, this people. Wisdom makes men capable of holding and what we would say discharging the highest duties and the most challenging offices. It is the source of authentic power and authority. Wisdom provides the perspective to see issues clearly and the power to pursue them, what we would say, courageously. Remember when Solomon was presented the, the issue before him to women. One of the women's babies had died. And during that night or a night, uh, she went into the other woman's room and took her baby and argued the fact that it wasn't her baby. It was this woman's baby. And so they, they have an argument on their hands. They take it before Solomon. Solomon says, I got the solution. Cut the baby in half. That's wisdom. Knowing that the mother whose baby it truly was would say, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let her have that baby. That's wisdom. I remember teaching that a few weeks ago thinking, I would have never thought of that. I would have never thought of that. Because the woman whose child it was not, she says, all right, we'll kill it. Well, then you know she doesn't have the compassion for that baby. So that baby wasn't truly hers. Wisdom. Wisdom and understanding is of God. Wisdom inspires all the good actions of kings. Every righteous enactment of their governing, every truly royal act derives its inspiration from wisdom that presides. And so we see here wisdom rules kings and princes. Now men, here's what we do. Men may mix their own pride in that and make a good decision, right? It's a good decision, benefits the nation, benefits their subjects, benefits their people, their constituents, and you're like, ha, ah, did a pretty good job there. Now, here's what men does. That wisdom ultimately came from the Lord, right? But men mix their own pride and folly and self-will and appoint, uh, appoint uh, their selves as the founder of that their wisdom. That's a slippery slope. Because that folly and self-will will take place and they'll appoint those they desire which eventually leads to doing right, which is in their own eyes. But when you give God the glory for wisdom, it's honoring. And so as we continue here, verse 16, let's go to verse, or verse 17. All right, wisdom's motivation is found here in verse 17. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. I love them that love me. When you love somebody, they love you back. There's a mutual motivation here. There's a mutual goodness that comes out of it. It's a reciprocating thing. Love is a great motivator. Love is a great motivator. Wisdom is found here crying out, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Now, to us, in our English verbiage, that would mean when you rise up early in the morning, you're going to find me. I don't think that to be the case with this term. People interpret this verse a few ways. When they say, uh, those, those that seek me early shall find me. I even tried to, to figure out where, where my position is on this because there's kind of two trains of thoughts here. Some would say those that seek wisdom early in life, those that seek early in life find wisdom. Well, uh, I don't know that I uh, completely follow that train of thought because what about those that seek it later in life? Do they not find it? Right? Uh, most, most would follow the train of thought that those that seek them early means earnestly right? 
earnestly, with, with desire, great passion, right? Those that seek wisdom, find it. James tells us those that ask for wisdom, what? Find it. So I see the same principle applied in the book of James. When we have a decision in front of us, a challenge in front of us, we're instructed to seek the wisdom of God, ask for wisdom, and God will be faithful to give that wisdom. And so I believe we're finding that verse uh, here in Proverbs chapter 17. They that seek me early shall find it. Earnestly seek me shall find it. And what does she bring with her? What does she bring with her? She brings with her verse 18. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Now, does this mean the prosperity gospel? Right? Does this mean that if I, if I do these things, it's a, it's a promise that I'm going to get rich? No, it's not. We know that. We've been studying that now for eight chapters. That is not what these verses mean. But the principle applies. Now, you could say there are heavenly riches being stored up for your faithfulness to wisdom. But the principles are applied here. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. As we continue to look here, verse 18. Uh, wisdom has these things in her possession to bestow on whom she will. Just as God gave Solomon his reward in 1 Kings chapter 3.13. And so we see here wisdom crying out. The opposite of what was crying out in chapter 7. Here's what accompanies wisdom. Discernment, discretion, prudence. Over those challenges in life where you're saying, which way do I go? Which element of truth? Is it a, is it a, is it a wolf in sheep's clothing? Right? Wisdom brings that discernment. Prudence. And along with it, we understand what doesn't come with wisdom because the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. It's to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. It doesn't take company with those things. And so we should easily say, nor should I. Nor should I. Counsel is mine. And sound wisdom and I am understanding. Our understanding, our enlightenment is of God. John chapter 1 verse 9. I have strength. It is what rules kings and princes in their justice. It should be ever important to you and I as we look at wisdom and continue to learn. It's no surprise that wisdom says those who love her will prosper. Are we, once again, as I've closed many of these messages out in the book of Proverbs, are we searching after it? We know what it brings. We know what it doesn't look like. We know what it's opposite of. Are we searching after it? Are we digging in to the riches of God's word for understanding? Are we seeking God's discernment? And in areas of our life, are we leaning on our own understanding? How important is wisdom to us? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this night. I thank you for helping us to understand the truths around wisdom. What it helps us with in our lives. What it, what it presents in our lives. May we follow after it. May we follow after your wisdom, after your understanding. May we seek for it. May we ask for it. Common theme. May we understand that its fruit is better than gold. Not just any gold, but fine gold, your word says. That it leads us in the way of righteousness. It's, it leads us in the right path. When two paths present itself and we're uncertain, we lean upon your wisdom to choose the right path as it leads to righteousness. 
that we don't swerve to one side or another. As we looked at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 27, as, as your word told us that we don't, we don't get off track, that we, we stay on the path of righteousness through heeding your instruction and taking your wisdom and your understanding. May we be like the psalmist who tells us to teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes and that I should keep them to the end. Lord, cause us to know the way wherein we should walk. May we take that promise that's given in Isaiah, that thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we ask for wisdom tonight. Whatever, whatever situation we find ourselves in, we ask for your wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Its result is greater than gold. And we cherish gold, don't we, Alan? People pay lots of money for that stuff, don't they? Just ask Alan and his shop. Right? We, do we value it? Do we value God's instruction, God's word, God's righteousness as we do the ring upon our finger? That's a good thought for us to, to break up. And if you have time, I would ask that you break up into prayer groups tonight. The kids aren't quite done downstairs. They've got about seven minutes. And so we ask, if you could, would you be able to pray? And we'll go over our prayer list uh, together, okay? You can break up the groups. Thank you.